Hello again collectors. So we're going to try something new today. In this box there should be a, a Shuko resin model. The pictures on the side should probably give you an idea of what the car is supposed to be. But uh, I'm going to open this because I don't know if they sent me the right thing. You know, So that's why I open my packages a lot of time on the online here on the YouTube. Uh, Mox Toys, they're on AliExpress. They're probably on eBay. I'm, I don't know. But anyways, that's the name of the seller where I got this from. So it's a nice, nice virgin box. Uh, so this is supposed to be a new line of resins, I guess, from uh, Shuko. Now, historically, Shuko makes die-cast cars, and historically, at least in 164, they're okay, but they're not. They're definitely not at the top of the uh, brands because they've cast it in mirrors and cast it in bumpers, whereas other brands would actually do separate pieces for those parts of a car. Okay, so here the seller put in some bubble wrap, and uh, I don't think there's going to be any damage. It's also in tissue paper. I assume that's probably from Shuko themselves. Oh boy, another goofy case. Um, so Shuko has a Mercedes, uh, like a G-Wagon type of vehicle. I don't think it's a G-Wagon though, it's something along those most giant trucks. And that's also the resin model. But, uh, I don't really like it so much. But this vehicle, I mean, just look at that, these photos. This thing just looks like a, a concept sketch in reality. You know, it's just so long and low. Okay, let's take a look at this box. Uh, I've never seen this one before. So it's called Pro R64. R, I imagine, is for the resin. It even says so. Resin plus plastic parts. Well, isn't all plastic a resin? Mm, I don't know what the nomenclature there. Uh, so it's supposed to be 164. And then I would assume it is licensed because Shuko is a real brand that's been around for a while. So it is. Uh, other than that, it's just a simple cardboard sleeve. What I'm not liking right off the bat is uh, this case. Uh, it, for me, it doesn't make much sense to make a case that doesn't suit the rest of the collecting community. The rest of the collecting community uses longer and more squarish cases. So, you know, I can't stack this up with all my other models. <laughs> other models. Oh, boy. All right. Well, anyways, it's a very light case. At least it's not a giant waste of plastic. Although you can see a stress mark right here, you know, so that's not so great. There's two screws holding the model on. So I assume, oh, you can even see the tooth right there is cracked off and that's brand new. So I got to squeeze this a little bit. There's a little... Yeah, so that's already broken right out of the box, which isn't very good. Okay, I don't see any, uh, oh boy, I might have to leave it on the plinth because if I drop it, that Mercedes star is gone. So, I'm going to leave it on the, the plinth, I guess. Let's uh, compare it to some photographs here. Looks quite similar to the photograph, I would say, at least from that view. Let's see the overall proportions here in the side view. Yeah, not bad. Okay, you'll notice here this actually darkness like there. Alright, the rear view. Let's give this a shot. Yeah. Alright, so, you know, Shuko's a German brand. I would have to assume that they actually had access to the real vehicle. Maybe they went and 3D scanned it. Or uh, maybe even got the, the CAD model from Mercedes. I don't know. Alright, so, for the cost of this model, this plinth is uh, pretty cheap. This is an exceptionally cheap plinth for, you know, the price of this model. It's, it's almost like the kind of plinth you'd find on an M2 machines or a blister pack Kyosho. It's actually exceptionally flimsy, you know. I shouldn't be able to do torque uh, a base, especially a base that actually has structural uh, shaping to it. So, yeah, that's pretty weak. This should come on, well, basically it should just come in a standard case like the rest of uh, all the other uh, 
164 premium brands do. Okay, so let's start here on the side. You'll notice I think the tires are squished. I think it's screwed down a little too tight because you can literally see how it's warped the tire. So let me get a, a screwdriver, try to reduce some tension here on this thing. So, well, no, the front still seems a little, all right, I can literally create an air gap there. So, that's uh, too bad that they torqued it down too much at the factory. These wheels are quite interesting. Honestly, I was hesitant to buy this because the photographs, the promotional pictures, didn't show these wheels looking very nice, as if the red wasn't painted perfectly in there. But I love, you know, torturing myself by buying models that I don't like. But so far, you know, the red is laid in very nice into those wheels. It's, uh, maybe it's aided by the fact that the wheels are chromed. So it's so reflective that it either hides a lot of maybe the paint imperfections. But for me, it looks okay, the amount of red in the, you know, the wheels. And yet the spokes, at least the, when you look at it straight from the side, the spokes are chrome. You know, while the rest in the are, is red. Well, the center cap is chrome too. And that does make me wonder, is there anything printed on the center cap? For the price of this model, there should be a Mercedes star there, but there is not. So, yeah, that's a that's Shuko cheaping out, I think. Even an Inno 64 that cost maybe one-third this amount would have had something printed there. The tires do look good though, you know, ignoring the front one, that thing's crushed, but the rear one looks pretty good. It's got decent curvature to the sidewall. The problem is, it's sticking out of the bodywork. Look at this. Right? Why is that tire sticking outside the fender? Let's try the top view here. So this side looks okay, but this side, the tires are clearly sticking out of the wheel well. And they can't seem to push it in. So that's a quality or a design problem right from the get-go. I'm going to have to take this off, the base off camera and see if I can take it apart. Or, you know what, let's just take it off. It's got some spacers. They're just uh, rubber tubes, thick uh, plastic tubing. But unfortunately, I feel like the spacers were too short because the tires are crushed. So again, I mean, this is this is such a cheap base for a model this expensive. Shame on you, Shuko. Shame. Okay, so it's exceptionally light because it's resin. You know, it's a plastic model. Uh, see here so it is screwed together so I'm gonna take that thing apart and try to fix it later it is nice that it tells you what the car is and it does tell you the brand that made it we just don't have a copyright on it the tire treads do look great see these other three tires look great but unfortunately look at the flat spot on this one because it was torqued down so much so that's too bad all right so on the side here there, there's a, it might be hard to tell, but there's actually a, I think this is a photo etched piece of metal, this running board, and there's little grooves, you know, like attraction grooves in there. So that's nice, it's a separate piece, even though you can't see it much from the side. But yeah, it is there. Mm, trying to catch the light better. I can't tell if it's black or if it's chrome. It, it looks black because it's in shadow. Alright. So this thing, I think, is just painted silver, this accent here. And it looks like there's a piece of metal glued going along the entire shoulder line here. So that's very nice. I think it's metal because I can literally see a thickness of it right there. Right? And when I run my pick over it, I can feel the break. I can feel the edge. So I don't think that's silver paint. I think it's literally a piece of, like, metal. So very nice. The mirrors, yeah, of course, there's some reflectors in those tiny little mirrors, which are separate pieces. Uh, 
there's no interior. It's just blacked out, which is unfortunate because the interior of this car looks amazing if you look up look it up online. But the windows here, this side window, looks like it's a black piece of plastic, and yet they've printed a little bit of a, a break there, so that might be black paint. And then you can see the trim. It's some sort of chrome. What I can't decipher is if it's a separate piece, or maybe that's the thickness of the plastic. Could be the... Th no, it, it definitely looks like chrome. So they maybe printed it on the back side or the front side. I can't really tell. It's so smooth. I don't... I, th I don't know. I don't think it's a separate piece, but it's also so shiny, I... It doesn't look like paint to me. So that one's a mystery. Okay. There is also a tiny bit of black paint here on this windshield, right, to represent the molding. Okay. So this metallic red is very nice. I, I see no orange peel. It's possible this was actually polished after it was clear coated. Okay. This is, be careful here. The star emblem is looking fantastic. I mean, look how look how thin that is. I don't. I'm not even gonna get the pick near it because it'll break. But yeah, that's possibly the nicest Mercedes star I've seen in this scale. If you actually look at the other stars on other models, I think the star is like thicker, you know. But this is so thin. Okay, you'll actually see my back printed right here on the grill. It's not really flat though. It's printed at a bad angle, it seems. So that's too bad. But the grill, I think, is a separate piece of uh, plastic, you know, painted silver and also black. So that's nice. I mean, these are grooves. It's not It's not a flat surface. The pick is snagging those grooves. Okay, so this is black in here, and then there's some silver going around this little chin accent here. Looks pretty good. I think it's a separate piece of plastic, just based on uh, this break here, right? So it's a separate piece. Okay. Going around to the back. Seems again we have some separate metal pieces here to represent the chrome. It's such a reflective finish. I mean, it is a mirror, so it's. I'm thinking it's like a stainless steel piece. All right, it's a little molded and uh, bent there, but I don't think there's any extra color. Now it's just dented in. And then this is indented, but I don't know if there's any paint there. Like, I think there should be red, the taillights, but there is black hair, though, in the middle. I think it's just black, a uh, black graphic running through there. There's a really thin line going through that groove, and then it's thicker here in the middle, and then it's thin again over here. But I don't see any red. Okay, so now the text here. Boy, hold on. Let me try to get a different angle here. I'm sure it's legible. It's just so reflective that the camera can't focus on it. I mean, the bottom it says six, obviously Vision Six, but does it say Vision Mercedes Dash Maybach? That's what I think it says. Hopefully the YouTube will show up clear. My my camera screen's so small it's hard to tell. Okay, so back windows they look like the black plastic with a tiny bit of chrome going around them. It's, just like the side windows so that's really impressive because those are some small windows I mean look at this dental pick it's such a small piece of plastic and yet they still got the trim around it so that's pretty spectacular all right okay my fingerprints all over this guy so this is the star again it's a little crooked but it is a really nice star I think that might be like a foil sticker so it's a real shame that those sticker. if this is a sticker, it should be on the wheels also. It's, uh, it's too bad. Okay, this is also probably a metal piece here. I can feel a break. Yeah, so it's just glued on nicely. It's actually two pieces. They actually have a break here for this little hatch. So the, you know, the body panel gaps are pretty nice. Very tight. Tight like a tiger. Okay. I don't really see anything wrong on this side other than the squished tire again. 
It's a little squished on this one. The odd thing is, that's actually pretty realistic. You know, real cars have flat spots. If you back up to the photograph, it's got a flat spot right here because of the weight of the vehicle. So, I suppose it's actually realistic for them to flatten that out. I wonder if some manufacturers do that intentionally. You know, it's squish them down because on a real car it would do that. But I still kind of feel like I, I like the uh, unrealistic round tire. What do you guys think about that? Realism and squished or not squished? I like it round because I can spin the wheel around. If you know if there's a blemish somewhere, I can turn it so I can see less of the blemish. That's the reason for me as to why I, I like concentric tires. Okay, so yeah, this side, the tires don't stick out as much. But this side is just ridiculous. Oh, I see. I see what's going on, at least here. You can see a lot of the axle right here, right? The pick is totally in there. But on this side, it's tight. It's much tighter. Hmm. Okay. I didn't fail to talk about the headlights, so let's go back to that. So, yeah, the headlights do look nice. I mean, there's some separators. It looks like there's three sets of lights and two, two black separators. And again, it seems like there's a tiny little bit of chrome going around that thing. Which, frankly, I'm having a hard time understanding how they got that so perfectly done. It is so thin. I'm pretty sure my hair is thicker than that silver line. And yet, look, I mean, it, it's horizontal and then it kinks down right there. Same on this side. Horizontal and then it kinks down. So, that is a really fantastic graphic. I think it's a graphic. Anyways, I'm pretty sure it's a graphic and it's just so well done that it's frankly amazing. Uh, because it's not even a flat surface. I mean, it's inside of a concave area. So to print that inside of a concave area is, is hard for me to understand how someone did that. Another mystery of making miniature models. All right. Well, unfortunately it looks pretty horrible with all my oily hands, but uh, I say this is actually pretty nice, except, uh, you know, the minor QC problems that I can hopefully fix because it's screwed together. I'm just going to have to take this apart and try to compress it later, and so I'll get the tires in there underneath those fenders. I think that should be our, our doable. But as compare, this is also, I swear, this must be one of the lightest models I, I own. It's so light, it's crazy. But I don't care about weight so much, you know. In fact, the lighter the model is, the better chance it's going to survive being dropped. It also reduces shipping costs if you're doing bulk purchases like I tend to do. Alright, let me get one of these spinners out there and we'll compare it to a couple other large vehicles. Large, large barges. on that model. Uh, let's start with the most unrealistic comparison. This is an Auto World Cadillac. It's a 1976 fourth generation Cadillac something because I can't read the text on the bottom. <laughs> it doesn't say what it is, which is silly, right? It's one of those lowrider Cadillacs. I don't know if it's an Eldorado or uh, a Coupe de Ville. I think it's a Coupe de Ville. I think I just saw it on the side. So... It's actually quite similar in its uh, appearance here. Alright, while it's spinning, I'll start talking about this Maybach a little bit more. It was a concept car that was put out in um, 2016 at the Pebble Beach Concourse. And uh, it's a 2 plus 2, and it's an electric all-wheel drive system. There's literally four motors. I'm guessing a motor in each wheel. It's rated at 550 kilowatts, or around 750 horsepower. It's also supposed to have gull wings, gull wing doors that is. And theoretically it's supposed to do 0 to 60 in 4 seconds, and then uh, a range of over 500 kilometers, or like 360 miles I think. And it's supposed to be 5.7 meters long, which is why it looks quite similar to these other uh, massive vehicles. So the black vehicle I pulled out is made by Kyosho. It's the Bentley Mulzan. If 
if you're unaware. And the last one here, this is by GCD. It's one of these uh, 600 Pullman limos. So, I mean, this limo is a little, it's definitely longer, but it's not longer by a large, large amount. Meaning these two other cars are just massive vehicles in, in real life. That's enough spin time. It needs to spin alone. Yeah, see the flat spots on those tires on the, the photograph. Alright guys, well a couple things that I'm realizing. For the cost of this model, it should come with a nicer case. That's and the case is standardized with all the other premium brands. Um, other than that, you know, the model is actually pretty nice. Uh, you know, the only nitpick is one side of the, the wheels are sticking out too far, but since it's a screwed together base, I can fix it. So that doesn't bother me so much. So I guess in summary, I, if you love the look of this car, I think it's worth, worth getting. And as I mentioned, uh, at the start, they, they are making some crazy, like, uh, like a G-Wagon. It's like a convertible G-Wagon and it looks massive. Which is probably why this crystal box is so tall. Because it has to fit, you know, an SUV. So it just looks a little ridiculous with, uh, you know, something like this inside of it. But there, that's the reason, I guess. Alright guys, well, I guess I'll continue to try to get some of these uh, expensive models. Because uh, they do seem worth it. Uh, I couldn't make this model very easily, you know, if someone just gave me these parts, I, it would be really, I don't think I could glue on those those metal pieces so straight and so without any like warping, you know, so it's quite nice. Although actually now I'm noticing this one, I hope I didn't ruin it, but this chrome strip is actually sticking up, it's peeling off, see? So that's, oh, thankfully. All right, so you don't want to really take this off the base if you can avoid it. Once I fix the wheels, I'm going to put it back on the base forever because that's obviously very sensitive, the little chrome strip. All right, well, thanks for chiming in, and I'll uh, see you guys the next time around. Thanks.